Hey guys, what's up? By Sactatron here from One Hive Gazette, here with the next video, and today we are talking all about the Frozen Witch attack strategy for Town Hall 10. We'll get to those replays in just a moment, both replays that did work and did not work, talk about why, but the main focus is base identification. What types of Town Hall 10 bases do you want to attack with this uh, strategy? Uh, troop deployment and common mistakes that are made. Uh, when using this strategy. But first, big shout out to my patrons on Patreon. Uh, it is one of the perks is you can request videos at a certain tier. And this was a video that was requested by one of my patrons. So big shout out to him as well as everyone else. You can get custom war bases, access to Discord server, request videos, all those kinds of good perks. So be sure to check out my Patreon page. But anyway, let's get into the focus of today's video. Let's get these attacks rolling and let's talk about this strategy. So here's a look at our first attack. Um, the army composition, basically gonna fill it up with about 12 witches, five wizards, wall wrecker containing a CC of bowlers and possibly like a giant in it. Then you're gonna have one rage, one heal, one poison and the rest freeze. That works out to about seven freezes. And then four witches on each side, maybe five. Then you just drop a few in the middle. Um, you can see that you come in. The important thing is that you're coming in opposite from the town hall. That way the wall wrecker pushes through and you use the rage and the heal to kind of push past the hardest part of the base, which is that first inferno tower, typically the CC troops, um, the defensive heroes, stuff like that, that kind of hits you at once. That's the hardest part to get through. So don't be patient on the rage and the heal. Use those right as you enter, as you would in any type of witch bowler attack. Um, but save those freezes, and you use the freezes periodically to freeze mainly infernos and other big groups of uh, defenses, typically freezing stuff in the core to help out your force moving through the core, but you can use the freezes on the outside of the base if witches are getting targeted by a wizard tower and they don't have any healers on them. Um, another thing I forgot to mention, two healers is typically what you bring, because oftentimes one side of the base is better to use healers on than the other. And what I mean by that is there might be air defenses on one side, which means probably not best idea to use healers on that side. But on the other side, it's just like wizard towers, archer towers, no air defenses. That's a good side to use healers on. Now let's take a look at an, a, kind of a bad example. The first type of base you don't want to use this on. And that is when there's no clean uh, way to come from with the wall wrecker to get through the base. So you can see the town hall, it's kind of cut off here. It's where the wall wrecker is heading, kind of the top left of the base here, and it's just a very awkward entry because the wall wrecker is coming in at an angle. It's not going in from bottom left to top right, which would be ideal, and it's not going to push very deep into the base. Now, uh, the freezes are good. He's freezing the inferno. That's what you want to do is freeze the single inferno when it locks onto your wall wrecker. That way it pushes a lot farther because you need to open up at least half of the base for your witches because you don't have any jumps, you don't have any wall breakers. But you can see there's still a solid three layers of walls separating his troops from the uh, second inferno tower. And you gotta get through, you gotta get both infernos. You gotta at least kind of scoop out the core of the base so the outside witches can do their job. And you can see because the walls are preventing his troops from moving. The queen and a bunch of witches go around the outside, which sometimes isn't that big of a deal, but it is if you're not gonna clean out the inside of the base. It's not so much that the inferno tower is not going down. Any defense in that position would be a problem, whether it's an expo or something else. But the fact is there's defenses inside the base that can't be reached from the outside. The middle stuff goes down. So even though there's witches still alive on the outside, it doesn't matter. So that's kind of the first do not of this strategy is you got to come at a clean angle so that you're coming almost opposite from the town hall, um, as close as you can be to coming exactly opposite the town hall. So the wall wrecker uh, pushes through very cleanly. Now it was done awkwardly on that base because the inferno towers were set up so that if he came opposite the town hall, he would be splitting the infernos in a very awkward way, which is another thing you don't want to look for. You want to look to kind of encounter both infernos along the main push. You don't want them to be kind of on the outside. You don't want to be going in between them. So some bases are better than others in that sense. This is a good base to do it on because you can see both infernos are more or less in the, the path of his main push through the base. So drops the witches on both sides, uses the healers on the bottom here because there's no air defenses 
and um, actually a bunch of witches end up walking, which is okay. Sometimes you'll have six witches on one side, sometimes you'll only have two on the other. As long as they can get most of that side taken out, you'll be okay. The freezes are used kind of periodically here. Um, not just freezing the infernos, freezing like the wizard tower expo there. Um, you have seven of them, so typically you're going to use your first few to freeze infernos as they lock on to your wall wrecker. That way your wall wrecker pushes as far as possible before it goes down. That's your main priority because you need that thing to open up the walls. And then let the bowlers come out organically, you don't have to deploy it early. Um, and then just kind of freezing where needed. At this point the base is pretty much finished. The witches up top did not finish off that entire side, they went down, but as long as they get about half the side taken out, you'll be okay. As long as the other side makes it fully around, you don't need both sides to come around, just one side typically, and typically the side with the healers will be the one that does it. Now you can use healers on both sides. Um, I might have got the numbers for the witches wrong. You're going to have closer to maybe like 15, even more. Uh, depending on how many wizards you bring. Wizards are kind of just support troops to guide your witches, and you can also sprinkle them in to help take out CC troops, or even to go along the outside of the base. I like using wizards. This attack didn't use many wizards. Um, but this illustrates another common mistake that makes this attack uh, go very wrong, and that is when you completely don't have a flank. So no witches in the top group are actually going to go around the base. Now this is a good base for that for this strategy. Um, town Hall is pretty much opposite the entry, more or less. The wall wrecker can make a nice path for everything, plus the queen draws things through the wall, so the funneling's good. Um, and also, uh, the infernos, you're kind of coming at them one at a time, which is what you want. What you don't want is when you split the infernos, when you have one on your left, one on your right, and it's not clear that your kill squad will get either of them as it enters. But this is good. The, um, the infernos are nice and lined up, one in the front, one in the back. Um, the problem is all the witches went inside. So you can see a bunch of witches on the inside. We have the witches that are on the bottom, which are doing okay. But nothing up top, nothing took out the archer tower, the cannon, that stuff. And this is as much an issue for damage. You can see a lot of damage uh, went to the queen. She ends up getting away there. Um, but it's not only a damage issue, it's also an issue of time because this is going to be a time fail, which is surprising since it's a, it's a very uh, quick attack. Everything goes down at once, pretty much. But you can see these witches aren't extre extremely fast. Um, they don't do a lot of damage, and the skeletons have to go through walls often, so um, it's a time fail, and that's what happens. you got to use wizards to kind of cut a funnel if it's not already natural so that some witches go to the outside. And part of that is not deploying them all in one spot, but spreading them out. Um, this is a good example. Let's kind of look at how the witches were deployed in this attack um, initially. Get that initial deployment down. Um, where are we going to start here? Up top. Okay, so you can see uh, three witches, and I think three witches. Wall Wrecker, want to get that guy down early, can tank. Um, then just a line of witches in the back. And this is, I think, the ideal way to do it. Because the witches you deploy in the corner are 90% of the time, they're going to go around the outside as long as you deploy everything else fairly soon after. Then the witches you spread around, maybe one, two on each side will go to the outside as well, maybe not. So that way there's a little bit of leeway. You know, you could have you know, maybe a minimum of three witches on each side, or if the witches you kind of spread out along that line there, um, maybe two to four of them go to the outside, then you have a little more on the outside, a little less in the middle, that can work too. So um, that way you're kind of, you can get it both ways. So that's the best way to deploy, I'd say, is the way it was done in this attack, where you drop like three in each corner. Those are the minimum witches going around the outside. Put them in the corners, that way they're pretty much going. Um, then you, soon after that, deploy the wall wrecker and just spam the nine witches along the back row between each corner. And then your heroes, of course, and spells and all that. But that way, you know, some witches may go in, some may go out but you know you're getting a minimum of three on each side, and you know at least some are going to go into the base because some are just sitting right in the middle where the entry is. Um, this next attack is going to be our last failed attack we take a look at, and um, this is a bit of a trickier thing to look for. The first two, I guess, were somewhat obvious in that the wall wrecker has to go more or less through the base. The angle has to be okay in that the witches have to stay on the outside. Those were fairly straightforward, but some bases are just 
too wide, too thick um, on the entry. And you'll notice that the witches on the outside here, they're kind of being pushed very far to each side. The base expands very far in both directions in that the, the witches that go on the inside and the heroes, that main kill squad force, it has so much to, to take out and it's very spread out. See, the queen's going all the way up for an expo that the witches couldn't reach. Meanwhile, there's wizard towers on the opposite side of the base. All of that is the responsibility of the kill squad, and it makes it very difficult. So you can see there's just layer upon layer that the witches on the outside can't reach. And notice they're doing fine. Um, both sides are still up. But the problem is there was so much on the inside that those witches had to deal with. Um, the witches, the heroes, the bowlers, that kill squad, we'll call it, um, but they they couldn't do it. So they're going to go down here because um, the queen splits one way, the witches kind of split the other way. They go down to those wizard towers. There was just so many defenses that even though the witches on the outside were fine, they were only taking out one layer of buildings. And in this case, the base was so wide on that angle that um, it was just too much for the witches in the middle for that kill squad force. So they went down and that pretty much did it for the attack. The witches couldn't clean up the rest around the outside. Um, so that's a good thing to think of for base building is what we've talked about in these three fails, um, the way the town hall set up with the infernos as well, um, which funneling going outside, inside, and then how wide your base is at those uh, certain points, all things to keep in mind for base building. Um, just wanted to give that a, a nod there for those of you thinking how to defend this strategy. Okay, <clears throat> last attack. This one's going to be a successful one. We're kind of staggering them back and forth here. Um, you can see freezing defenses on the outside, not just defenses on the inside. I think that's a good thing to do um, just to make sure that your outer witches get that initial push that they need. In this case, it was a little bit awkward how everything went in because there was some skeleton traps, which by the way are a good way to kind of mess people up for you uh, base builders out there. But good freezes on the infernos here and both sides doing good. Elected to use the healers on the bottom there. It's just a choice of which has more uh, defenses they have to encounter as well as which has more um, air defenses, which you want to keep the healers away from. Um, but everything pushes through here. The wall wrecker ideally should get through like two or three layers of walls. Then it'll probably die. So you're not going to access everything that you might otherwise do in like a witch boulder where you're doing a double jump. Um, there's going to be walls that you have to go through. But that's okay. The witches are in no hurry. They spawn skeletons. They regenerate. And for those of you thinking, you know, Town Hall 11, Town Hall 12, not going to work as well because you have the Eagle Artillery, which does a lot of damage and you have to move quickly when it's been activated. The power of this strategy is that the Witches might be slow, but they regenerate skeletons, they're hard to kill, and um, it doesn't matter because there's no Eagle. There's nothing uh, that's forcing them to have to act quickly. So that's why this is better at Town Hall 10 than 11 or 12. But anyway, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Once again, shout out to my patrons on Patreon, especially the guy who requested this video. It was about time I made this one, and he kind of pushed me to finally get it done. So that'll do it, and I'll see you guys later. Bye, Sectatron out.